We're now roughly into day four of military action in Iraq. Here to talk about what's noble in terms of what we've accomplished and when our mission will be complete is Steve Bucci. Steve is the Director of Foreign Policy Studies here at the Heritage Foundation. Steve, thanks for talking with us. Thanks for having me on the show again. So where are we exactly in terms of what we've actually accomplished and when will we know we've done what we need to do? Well, we've started the humanitarian effort to try and, and uh, relieve the Yazidi people who were trapped on Mount Sinjar. Some of those have gotten away, but there's still a long way to go in that area. And we've also begun military airstrikes against the ISIS forces, and that has a long, long way to go. What are we trying to actually accomplish there? I mean, we've, ta we've heard of pinpricks, but what are we actually trying to accomplish beyond just protecting U.S. personnel who may be there? Well, thus far, the president has said that's really the, the reason for it, is to protect the U.S. personnel first, but also to hopefully uh, provide for cover for the humanitarian operations. The problem is it is just pinpricks so far. It has not been a comprehensive strategy. And many of us think that's the problem. There needs to be a more comprehensive view to defeat these guys and not just do the humanitarian piece of it. Let's talk about the humanitarian piece and we'll come back to that. There are horror stories now coming out of the persecution to the Yazidi people. Where, where is this in terms of persecution to religious minorities? Where does this rank in terms of what we've seen historically? Well, so far, it's, it has the potential for being one of the biggest that we've seen. It, it has been referred to as a potential genocide. It's not there yet, but there's still been a lot of people killed. The Iraqis announced they found 500 bodies in a mass grave, some of which it appeared to have been buried alive. They think there's over 300 plus female Yazidis that have been captured and sold into slavery. We don't know how far it goes yet, but if you take ISIS on its word, they've told all these people, 40,000 people, that they're either going to convert to the ISIS's form of Islam or die. And you believe that they actually mean that? Uh, the, the actions they've taken thus far against other minorities, Christians and Muslims who've disagreed with them, they've beheaded people, they've crucified bodies after they've killed them, they've even done that to little children. These guys are serious. When they say they're going to kill somebody, they're more than willing to do it. Now, there was some talk over the weekend, Senator Lindsey Graham, Republican of South Carolina, said on Fox News Sunday uh, that basically these folks are wanting to bring it to the U.S. homeland, uh, that they are not folks who are just going to be happy just taking care of, of what's going on in Syria and other parts of the Middle East. They truly want to come to the U.S. and bring the terror here. Let's listen to Senator Graham. What is going on in Washington when the FBI director, when the head of national intelligence, the CIA, the Homeland Security Secretary, tells every member of Congress, including the president, we're about to be attacked in a serious way because of the threat emanating from Syria and Iraq. His responsibility as president is to defend this nation. If he does not go on the offensive against ISIS, ISIL, whatever you want to call these guys, they are coming here. Steve, Senator Graham says they're coming here. Is that a real threat? Uh, it is a real threat. ISIS has a great number of personnel that they've recruited foreign fighters from Western European countries, some of which are, are in our visa waiver program that have what we would refer to as clean papers. They have passports that would not flag them for any sort of special attention that could then come from their homes of residence in Europe to the United States to conduct acts of terror. Again, if we take ISIS at their word, they have said they are not going to give up until they see the flag of Islam flying over the White House. That's a pretty significant challenge. The last time we heard this was from al-Qaeda, who said they were declaring war on us prior to 9-11, and we didn't believe them. I think this time we ought to take these folks at their word. Do you think President Obama is taking them at their word? I mean, are we where we are today because he's not taking these threats seriously? He called these folks junior varsity uh, not too long ago. Do you think he now understands they are the threat that they truly are? I wish I could say yes, but I believe that President Obama is still hoping against hope that he can do the minimum and keep these people at bay. Many of us, myself included, don't believe that. We really think we should be going after ISIS, not just to relieve the humanitarian issue, 
but to destroy this organization that is challenging not just the United States and Iraq, but the entire region of the Middle East. Now, for everyone, though, watching right now who says, we have went to Iraq, look what's happening again today, why on earth would we go back? What would we do differently? What would you be advising the president now we should do so that we could take them out and we could truly have a mission accomplished? Or again, can you actually get that? Uh, well, you can never say for certain that we'd be able to get there, but I don't think anyone, including myself, wants us to launch the 82nd Airborne Division or, or conventional American troops on the ground there. But I think if we look at our operation in Afghanistan right after 9-11, which was quite successful by putting American Special Operations Forces in conjunction with local forces, whether they be Iraqi military, the Kurdish Peshmerga, perhaps some of our other allies in the region, the Turks or the Jordanians might come in and then use a, a larger scale air campaign that's guided by those special operations forces. I think we could defeat these guys and avoid the, the full scale commitment of American forces on the ground. Final question for you. We have seen the Kurds now begin to step up in a few places. They've taken two areas, I believe, back from ISIS, they claim. Is there anybody beyond the Kurds that we should be supporting and making sure they have the U.S. Uh, support behind them? Uh, well, the, the Iraqi military, if we can get the, the government in Baghdad to settle down and decide where it is they want to stand, we should be supporting that, those military units also. But as I mentioned, I, I, I really hope we can get a regional response, including the Turks and the Jordanians, because they're at risk as well and they need to contribute to the solution of the problem as much as we do. Well, this is a story that continues to develop day by day. Stephen, I know that you and your team are following this, and we would encourage you to continue to follow Stephen's work, that of his teams, uh, and you can do all of that by going to dailysignal.com.